Hello, I'm Mr. Zamoyski from North Tonawanda High School, and this is the chemistry pre-lab for the lab titled Bunsen Burner. The Bunsen Burner is one of the most useful chemistry tools we'll have in the lab, and it's our way of making fire and heating things up. So let's take a look at how to use this very valuable and somewhat dangerous tool so that we can have a safe and worthwhile lab experience. Anytime we're working with fire, it's going to be a dangerous situation. So we have to take all the proper precautions to make sure we're having a safe lab experience. First of all, we're working with heat, so we're going to be using goggles. Okay. Secondly, you don't want any loose or flowing clothing. So I have my sleeves unbuttoned here. That's not going to work because if I'm reaching over something, it's going to go into the flame. and We don't want that at all. So any looser flowing shirts or baggy hoodies, you're going to want to not wear those. Um, I'm also going to take the precaution, since I am wearing a necktie here, I'm going to put an apron on. Uh, this is not always required for the lab, but for me, I'm going to put it on so that there's no possibility that my tie is going to fall off into the fire. Um, also, what I could do is tuck it into my shirt. So particularly, uh, this might apply to anybody who's wearing a hoodie or something that has strings in the front of it. You want to tuck those away. Uh, next, what you're going to do, uh, if you have long hair, you're going to want to tie that back and make sure that that doesn't dangle into the fire as well. Uh, we have many hair ties here uh, in the lab. Just let me know if you need one and uh, you can use that. Let's take a look at what a Bunsen burner actually is before we use it. It's actually a relatively simple piece of equipment. It has this rubber tube, which we attach to the gas line. And then you can see if I take this rubber tube off, that there's just a nozzle here. That nozzle will make the gas flow from here into the Bunsen burner. If we look on the bottom here, there is a valve that controls the flow of gas from the gas line into the Bunsen burner. And so we'll practice adjusting that in a little bit. And then the gas flows into this barrel. Now if we unscrew this barrel here, you'll see that there's a very tiny pinhole that the gas comes out of. So it really controls and restricts the flow of gas um, so that we don't have any sort of fire hazard, particularly an explosion. And then it's very simple to put back together. You just screw the top back on. Reattach the hose, and you're ready to go. So I have all my safety equipment on. My hair's tied back if it's long. Any loose clothing is not being worn, or my sleeves are rolled up in this case. Let's begin to use the Bunsen burner. But before we do that, we also want to take a precaution in the off chance that I accidentally knock over the Bunsen burner, that fire's still going to go. So let's make sure that all papers are clear. And you can have papers on your table, but you just don't want them close enough to the Bunsen burner that they could possibly catch fire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the hose into the gas line. Now, when I turn this gas line on, nothing's going to happen yet. So we need to check and see a couple places to turn on the gas when we actually need to use it. First place you're going to want to check is this little area between your lab table and the side table. So if we open up this door down here, you'll see there's a yellow valve. If it's pointing down, that means the gas line is closed. And this is what we want most of the time. But since we actually want to use the gas, we're going to turn it to the side and open up our gas line. If you walk into the entrance of the classroom and you look to your right, you see this device right here. If your gas still isn't flowing after you turn on the valve by your station, that means I forgot to turn on the gas. What I do is I put my key into here, and you'll hear the little click come from the ceiling. That means the gas line to the room is open. Now, if there's ever an emergency, either outside of this room or inside this room where we have a fire out of control, we want to turn off the gas line so that we don't have a fuel source providing the fire. So what we'll do is we'll press this red button, and now all of the gas lines in this room are shut off. Since we want to start the Bunsen burner, we're going to turn this back on. Let's go start our Bunsen burner. 
Before we light our Bunsen burner, a couple notes about gas safety. First of all, the gas can react explosively with fire. So you don't want it running unless you have the Bunsen burner lit. If you have the gas line open and no fire, that means that the room is filling up with gas and there's a potential for an explosion, which we don't want. Also, more likely is that it could be a health hazard. If you breathe in too much natural gas, that means you're not breathing in oxygen. So you might start feeling symptoms like lightheadedness, dizziness, sick to your stomach. If you feel any of those symptoms, turn off your gas line, tell your partner and your teacher immediately, and I'll have you either stand outside in some fresh air or I'll send you to the nurse's office until you recover. We don't want you suffocating or having any sort of emergency because you breathe in too much natural gas. Before we light our Bunsen burner, let's make sure that it'll actually light when we start it. If we look underneath the Bunsen burner, there's a valve here. If it's turned all the way clockwise or to the right, that means that this valve is closed and none of the gas from the gas line is coming into the Bunsen burner. So if you try lighting your Bunsen burner and there doesn't appear to be any gas coming out, you want to check this. So give it a couple turns counterclockwise or to the left. Okay. Now what we'll do is we're going to light our match first. In terms of gas safety, we don't want gas flowing freely for an explosion hazard or a health hazard, and that might make you sick. So what we're going to do is we're going to light our match first, then light or turn on our gas line. This can work well with a partner, but it's perfectly okay to do this by yourself. Okay. So let's light the match. And then I'm going to turn on the gas line. And there we go, our Bunsen burner flame is lit. If you don't light your Bunsen burner that easily or don't get it on the first try, be patient. I was able to do that because I've been lighting Bunsen burners for years. This will take some practice getting used to. If you're struggling to light the Bunsen burner and you can't get it on the first try or your match goes out, turn off the gas line first. As we said before, we don't want natural gas just flowing into the air because it could cause an explosion or it could make you feel sick. Try again, relight your match, and then turn on your gas line. Also, if your flame ever goes out, make sure to turn off your gas line. We want to reduce the amount of free natural gas in the air as much as possible. I turned off the lights just so it's easier to see the flame in this video, but you'll be able to see it in daylight with the classroom lights on. As you can see, this flame is pretty high. We have no reason to keep the flame this high. So we want to reduce the flow of gas into it. So we're going to take that valve at the very bottom that we, we opened up at the beginning. And we're going to turn it counterclockwise until we get a lower flame. We should get a nice double cone where we have a lighter blue flame, sort of a triangle on the inside, and then a darker blue on the top here. This is called a non-luminous flame because it's harder to see the blue flame. Okay. This barrel right here, there's a, an opening here, and this allows air to flow inside of it. In order to make a fire, we need oxygen from the air and a fuel source, which is natural gas from this line. If we open and close this barrel, that will change the amount of oxygen that comes in. If we screw it and turn it all the way clockwise, we're going to get a bright, luminous flame here. If we open it up and turn it counterclockwise to the left, we'll go back to our non-luminous flame with our double cone. You'll test in the lab to see which of these flames is hottest. A couple safety notes about working with hot things. If you're ever handling or heating glassware, you never want to touch the glass directly both while you're heating it and after the heating is done. You want to handle your glassware either using metal tongs or you can pick up the glassware using these rubber holders. Okay? This will prevent the hot glass from touching your skin. Remember that hot glass looks exactly the same as cold glass, so if you ever are concerned about glassware, Put your hand near it before you actually touch it to feel if it's hot or not, before you grab it with your bare hands. But always play it safe 
and touch it first with the rubber gloves or the tongs. Also, you don't want to put the glass directly on the lab surface. It just may damage it and lose its integrity. So what you want to do is you want to put it on one of these wire frames here. That'll help dissipate the heat and prevent it from burning the surface, and it'll help it cool down. Finally, if you have a hot piece of glassware, in addition to not touching it, you also don't want to put it in cold water. Glass can handle high temperatures very well, it can handle cold temperatures very well, but it doesn't respond very well from going quickly from high temperatures to cold temperatures or vice versa. So never put your hot glassware into a sink of running water into cold water. It'll cause shock in the glass, which will cause the glass to break. And we don't want that. That's it for the pre-lab for the Bunsen burner lab. Before you come to lab, make sure that you have read all the procedures, particularly the safety and hazards information related to using the Bunsen burner. Fire can be dangerous to work with. Make sure that you've answered all the pre-lab questions and make sure you're properly dressed to be working with fire in the lab. Using the Bunsen burner effectively takes practice, but it allows us to do so many cool things in the lab. That's all I have on the Bunsen burner. Thanks and have a good day.